Today's scripture lesson comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 12. Hear a word from the Lord. Honor your father and mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. The word of God for the people of God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for all those gathered in this space today to worship you. We ask that the words heard in the song sung speak to the depths of our heart so that we can come more and more to know you every day. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm not going to lie to you because that would be breaking the ninth commandment, but I was not overly excited about preaching on honoring your mother and father. I called my dad and said, Dad, you would not believe what I have to preach on on Sunday. And he said, how cool your dad is? I said, basically, I have to preach on honoring my mom and dad. He said, I hate I'm missing that one. Yeah, me too. I was trying to figure out how I was going to get out of this one. So last week in staff meeting, we were talking about preaching on the different commandments coming up. And I said to Dr. Guppy and Pastor Josh, I don't even have kids to make them listen and say, hey, you've got to listen. And I'm telling you about honoring me. And Josh said, oh, they wouldn't listen to me either. <laughs> and then Dr. Guppy said, well, if you want to take the one on adultery, you can have, I'll take this one. <laughs> I said, thanks, but no thanks. I'll keep with this one. But the problem I was having was I had the wrong idea about this commandment. I thought it was a commandment here to children so that they would honor and obey their parents. I also wasn't crazy about preaching the sermon because I feel like I'm at a weird age in regard to parents. I'm independent. I live alone. I pay most of my bills. My parents pay the rest. Yet I still want my mom to come take care of me when I'm sick and my dad still mows my grass on Thursdays. The Ten Commandments weren't just written for adults to be practiced. They were written by adults to be practiced for adults. While children are often told to honor their mother and father, this commandment applies to all of us. We are all commanded to honor our parents. Honoring your mother and father is something we hear all the time. I think even non-religious people use this phrase and maybe don't even know where it comes from. But what does it mean to honor someone? And why does God think it's so important that it's in the Ten Commandments? One definition to honor is to regard someone with great respect. If this is how we ought to treat our parents, I bet there's all of us, but all of us can think of an instance when we fail to do so. But I think an even bigger question is why. Why did God think this was so important that it made the top ten? Why is whether or not we honor our parents a concern to God at all? But let's just back up for a minute. If you look at all of the Ten Commandments, the first four relate to God. It talks about how we should deal with God, how we should treat God. The last six talk about how we should treat others. And I think it's interesting, and not just a coincidence, that the first commandment of these last six start with honoring our parents. Our parents are generally the first people we form connections with when we're born. It's our parents who hear our cries and rush to solve the problems. It's our parents who changed our diapers and filled our empty bellies, who sat with us when we were lonely and comfort us in pain. Our parents provide us with our first interactions with trust and love. One of the biggest lies that our culture tells us these days is that we can do anything we want and we can do it all alone. Our culture has come to treasure independence and self-reliance, but this does a disservice to our community. God created us as relational people. When God created the earth, God put Adam and Eve together so no one would be lonely. One way to remember that God made us to be in relationship with this one another is to look at your belly button. Now, you don't have to do it right now. Keep your shirts on. Later. You can think about your belly button. 
Now, before you think I've fallen off my rocker, stay with me just a second. When we were born, we were had our umbilical cords attached to our belly button that connected to our mothers. Our umbilical cord falls off a few days after we're born, but we always have the belly button. It's that belly button that reminds us that we are connected to our mothers, that we have this incredible gift of life. It's that gift that we can never earn or repay. Our relationship with our parents is probably the longest standing relationship we'll ever have. Within the time you went through many experiences together, and these experiences made you build trust with one another. When you were a baby and you cried, your mom or dad gained your trust or lost your trust by tending to you or not tending to you. And we honor our parents regardless of our ages by honoring the trust we have shared together. So here's an example of how you can break your parents' trust. I was not in trouble too often as a kid. I think I was generally a pretty good kid, um, but I was a normal child. And uh, I remember one time that I got really, really in trouble. I mean, in trouble, ground. Um, my parents took away my car. Uh, I had to ride to school with my dad. It was super embarrassing because he was a teacher at my school. And for a 16-year-old, it was the worst thing that could happen to my life. And so, but this is why. I broke my parents' trust. One day, I was cruising around the big rock hill on the way to pick up my friend, and there was a red light ahead of me, but it seemed um, somehow I wasn't paying attention, per se, um, and I missed the red light, and I hit the car in front of me. Now, it was a clunker. I couldn't really hurt the car in front of me, but I sure did hurt my car. Uh, I damaged the front end of my cute little SUV, um, but it wasn't super bad. And the person in the front of me didn't file claims because their car really couldn't be um, damaged any more than it was. So we went on our merry way. Um, but I kept going on my merry little way for a whole little while without telling my parents about this incident. Um, actually, I never told them about the incident, thus the issue. Um, so my, uh, it's one of these uh, assumptions that when you are a child, your parents um, just really aren't that smart. You just kind of assume that they they really don't pick up things that well. Um, when you get older, you realize that you maybe they're a little smarter than you gave them credit to be. And um, so my dad did realize that there was some damage in the front end of my car. Um, and so he asked about it. Um, and the, the fountain, just, the tears just came, um, but it didn't stop them. Usually it, it works, um, but it didn't work this time. I was in big trouble. Um, and the issue was that I broke my parents' trust. Um, I didn't communicate the way I was supposed to. I was scared I would get in trouble. Um, but what happened worse is I failed to have this relationship with my parents. I failed to communicate the way I needed to. Um, the good news is trust can be repaired, but it takes work and it takes time. Also, at some point in one's childhood, you realize your parents are human. You stop seeing your parents as superhuman and realize they're just like you. They make mistakes. They have bad hair days. They get cranky. And they have strengths and weaknesses. In order to truly honor your parents, you have to honor their humanity. You have to acknowledge that they will mistakes. They will make mistakes and occasionally they will make poor decisions. You have to love them and honor them anyways. You have to love them in spite of their humanity and you have to love them because of it. However, this commandment to honor our mother and father is not simply a commandment that requires action of the children. But parents ought to act in a way that requires honor. I'm going to repeat that. Parents must parent in honorable ways. It is our parents' responsibility to teach us how to apply the Ten Commandments to our lives. It is our parents who teach us whether or not a personal relationship with Jesus is important. It's our parents who teach us by words and actions if it's important to come to church. It's our parents who teach us the importance and power of prayer. Our parents teach us an incredible amount by their actions. My father occasionally likes to say, do as I say, not what I do. 
but we all know that it is our parents' actions that determine whether or not they are acting in a Christ-like manner. Now, this is not to say that parents and children are perfect, that parents will never make mistakes. I am only saying that, that this commandment does not let parents off the hook. When parents decide to have their child baptized in the church, they pledge to raise their children in a Christian home, to raise them in a church community, and to teach them the ways and teachings of the church. Now, one of my favorite things about being a pastor is being at the pulpit. And I don't mean preaching. I enjoy preaching, but I believe I have the best view from up here at the pulpit. I can see everything from up here. I can see family units bonding, sitting with each other, cute girls laying in their parents' laps. I can see children playing tic-tac-toe. I can see parents and families being families. It's from this view that I can realize why God gave us this commandment. After God commands us to honor our fathers and mothers, it reads, Honor your father and mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. This is a promise, a covenant, to honor your parents so that your days will, in life will be fruitful. It's not restricted. It's promising. Now, there are occasional instances that even if you honor your parents and pay them respect, they may not treat you well. Occasionally, respect and honor is not reciprocated. Sometimes, wonderful people have terrible parents. But that is not God's plan for us. God wants us to honor our parents so that we can learn to become parents if we one day choose to. We must acknowledge that we are who we are today because of our parents. That could be a good thing and it could be a bad thing. And it's often a little bit fun. And at college a few years ago, um, some of my friends met my father. And they said, oh my goodness, now it all makes sense. I said, y'all are the same person. Y'all even make the same noises. We all think certain ways and speak certain ways and act certain ways because of who our parents are. To do this, to this day, my, mother, my mother's favorite phrase that she likes to tell me quite often is, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. Man, I hate that thing. I have heard that phrase probably two trillion times, and generally it's because I'm saying something not very nice. Well, a couple of years ago, I was nannying for a five and six year old, five and six year old girls, and one day they were picking at each other, and it happened. I turned into my mother. Out of my mouth said, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. It was terrifying. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but at some point I turned into my mother. We all carry traces of our parents. And for parents, it's your responsibility to decide what traces you want your children to adopt. I was at Shrug Pancake Supper, sitting with the Wrens at the Benoit's. Mary Prater, this is your car. Mary Prater so kindly invited me over to her house for a sleepover. And then she added, a Jesus sleepover. And then Annie Benoit, who a little bit older, out of the blue said, Carly, do you want to have children? It was much easier for me to respond to Mary Prater's invitation for the sleepover than Annie's question. But in this preparation of this sermon, I've been thinking, if God plans for me to have children, I would love to. I would love to teach them all the things my parents have taught me. My dad has taught me that you can never tell someone too many times that you love them. My dad finishes every text message and every conversation with I love you. And recently he has added the phrase, I'm very proud of you, Rev. If a parent, if I am a parent, I want to teach my kids that you cannot tell them too much how loved they are or how proud of them you are. If I'm a parent, I want to tell them that there's nothing women cannot do as a person in a workplace or person in life, just like my mom has taught me. Our parents have taught us all sorts of things. My parents have taught me how important family is. Our parents have taught us things that we must pass on to our children and further generations. Unfortunately, there will be a time when our parents age 
and they need our care. It will then be our responsibility to show our honor to them by returning the care and nurture they showed us when we were children. It is when we care for our aging parents that our children will learn how to care for us when we are aging. We must honor our father and mother so that we can have life and have it abundantly. And not only for our children, but for all children to come. Remember, God gifted us so that we are never alone. God gave us belly buttons to remember that we are gifts and that family matters. <clears throat> to the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for our parents. <laughs> for those who are biological parents and those who filled in our lives when we need them. Lord, we give you thanks for all of those people who have become our cloud of witnesses. Lord, we know it takes a village to raise a child, and we thank you for those who have become our village. Lord, we thank you for the memories and the experiences of those who have gone before us. And we, help, we ask that you help us to learn how to honor those, to give witness and love and nurture to all those in need of it. We thank you so much for the best example that we have in our life, Jesus. It's in his name we pray.